You're watching Telecom TV Spotlight on 5G series. It's Thursday, the 2nd of March, and this is The Slice. Headlines today. Why telcos are backing private networks and 5G for new business services. How T-Mobile is all in with 5G and believes there is much more to come. And accelerating the alignment of standards and specifications for Open RAN. Hello, I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content for Telecom TV, and welcome to Thursday's edition of The Slice. Yes, it's our final show for this year's MWC. All week, the Telecom TV team has been bringing you daily coverage of the 5G news and analysis from Barcelona. I've been reporting from the studio, whilst my editorial colleagues Rayla Maitre and Yanitza Boyadzieva have been reporting from the event itself. So let's now hear from Ray and Yanni with their final exclusive report this week. And hopefully, Ray won't break out into song. When Frank Sinatra cleared his throat to sing, and now the end is near. I'm not sure he was referring to day four at Mobile World Congress 2023, but that's the tune zipping around in my almost empty noggin as we bring you, for the final time this week, the main developments from the Barcelona show floor. Many important issues get discussed at a major event such as MWC, but it's fair to say that one of the key debates here this week has been whether 5G has delivered what the industry promised and whether the massive investments made so far in 5G rollouts have been worth it for the network operators and their customers. And we can expect that debate is going to continue for some time. But that introspection doesn't stop the telecom sector talking about 6G and laying the ground for the next generation of mobile networking. Yeah, that's right, Yanni. The Next Generation Mobile Networks Alliance, or NGMN, was here this week providing an update on what it's exploring for its operator members in terms of 6G. US Cellular's Michael Irizarry, who is an NGMN board director, noted that it's important to explore what might be needed in the future in terms of networking and application capabilities and explore the option that what we now call 6G could, in reality, be an enhancement of 5G advanced to enable human-machine collaboration. Meanwhile, Japanese giant NTT has expanded its 6G partner portfolio to include Ericsson and test and measurement specialist Keysight Technologies. And Ericsson is also working with Taiwanese operator Chungwa Telecom, which has signed a 5G advanced and 6G memorandum of understanding with the Swedish vendor to jointly develop new applications and business opportunities in private wireless networking, network slicing and energy efficient networking. It's not like 6G has been thrust into the faces of MWC delegates this year, but it's a strong undercurrent that's not hard to find if you hunt the house of the FIRA. South Korea's SK Telecom continues to be a leading light in the telco metaverse sector. Building on earlier expansion of its metaverse platform called IFLAND to nearly 50 countries in North America, Europe, the Middle East and Asia, the operator has now teamed up with four more peers to further expand IFLAND. It's joined forces with Deutsche Telekom in Germany, T-Mobile in the US, as well as Malaysian operators Axiata and Cellcom Digi to promote its metaverse business. And here at MWC, SK Telecom placed a strong focus on IFLAND and demonstrated an urban air mobility aircraft simulator, which proved very popular with the MWC crowds. And Orange also presented futuristic showcases on its stand, such as the immersive run experience, which allowed attendees to enter the metaverse and simulate running a marathon in Paris, as if walking 20,000 steps per day around the show floor was not enough. The giant telco also demonstrated the use of mixed reality and robotics for industrial applications powered by 5G and digital twin technologies. In addition, I got the chance to enter a metaverse experience by Telefonica that used augmented reality and a virtual hologram to guide me on a tour with various activities, including playing the piano, organizing objects by shape, 
hitting buttons and viewing additional information about the telcos products and services. Vodafone's open RAN 5G network in a box prototype has been attracting a lot of attention since it was first unveiled a couple of weeks ago and has been the star attraction on the Vodafone booth here at MWC23. The product, based on a Raspberry Pi 4 personal computer and a software-defined radio chipset, is a low-cost design that can be used to extend the reach of a wide area mobile network or to provide a private 5G network. And according to Vodafone fellow and network architecture director Iago Tenorio, the levels of interest and quality of feedback on the design and its capabilities have persuaded Vodafone that it's worth taking the product beyond the prototype stage. So that's all of the news from the MWC show floor for this year. And as Ensign sang so well in the 90s, I want to see you out that door, baby. Bye, bye, bye. Ray and Yunitsa there with their final slice of MWC for the week. Trying to clock off early. Well, we'll see about that. Because we still have a packed program of news for you. So much more to fit in today. Starting with Deutsche Telekom. Group CTO Abdul Madassir stopped by our studios for a chat with Ray. And as well as discussing green networks, the evolution to DSPs, and disaggregation, he reaffirmed his commitment to Open RAN and its role within Deutsche Telekom's network. We would have loved to see all RAN coming up, Open RAN coming up much faster than it has, especially to be able to deploy in massive scale. And I think that sets us apart. We want to deploy in a multi-vendor setup and a massive scale. And that's why I'm glad that we have announced right now, together with Nokia, Fujitsu, and Mavinir, in our Europe footprint, we will start a commercial deployment already this year. And so I think it has taken us a while, but I am very optimistic that the next couple of years will be the beginning of the biggest expansion towards Open RAN era. Another great interview. We have so many this week. Be sure to watch it in its entirety on the Telecom TV website. Now, from Deutsche Telekom to T-Mobile, the US operator announced 5G standalone speeds of 3.3 gigabits per second with four aggregated channels. And Neville Ray, in his final MWC appearance as president of technology at T-Mobile before he retires later this year, explained why T-Mobile is all in on 5G. We're a 5G business. LTE is the last drawer of life, 2G, 3G, history. I want everything on 5G. We're in a position now I can combine FDD and TDD spectrum assets across low and mid band. I want there to be just one very large network pipe. I don't want to be worried about migrating between bands, only being able to use mid band. I want mid band and low band together, and I want every asset that we have in the company ultimately to be dedicated to that 5G lane. And so 4CC there today, four layers, four spectrum bands. We can now drive that north. We're talking at the show with our vendors about six and seven layer carrier aggregation. And that won't be too far out in our future. And as he also said during his presentation, we are only in the first quarter of the 5G age. There's plenty more to come. Well, 5G is also expected to play a major role in enterprise services, including the much-hyped, yet so far pretty underwhelming, private networks market. Mark Overton, Managing Director of Division X, part of UK Telco BT, explained why he is confident that we will see a lot more activity in this sector. It takes time, and at the end of the day, it's about return on investment. Not every site needs a private network. Having said that, with the cost of private networks coming down, the ability to deploy at scale and pace increasing, we are seeing a lot of opportunity in the market beyond ports and, and airports. There are spaces across the country, uh, in the UK in particular, that need better network coverage for enterprises to survive. Whether that's a manufacturing space, an industrial space, a business park, this is where private networks, whether it's a standalone network or a hybrid network, 
or a sliced network can really add a lot of value and enable that business area to become more digitally enabled. And that's what we're getting after as BT. Mark also spoke about why telcos are best placed to offer and support private networks. Watch the full interview to learn more. And it's a message that's echoed by Orange. We also spoke with Aliette Munier Lomprey, the CEO of Orange Business Services, and asked her about the importance of 5G for its business customers and how the CSP plans to expand its services. We are betting big on smart industry and what I was describing as operational experience. Yeah. And here we really try to federate a very large ecosystem of partners, bringing 5G on the table, whether it's with public networks or increasingly with mobile private networks. And we work with our equip equipment uh, manufacturer partners, device uh, manufacturers, with uh, also IoT players, with lots of startups, uh, cloud hyperscalers and so on, to try to build the right use cases. Aliette has a lot more to say on the subject, and you can listen to the whole interview with Ray Lemaitre here on Telecom TV. Standards, there's just no getting away from them. Standards and specifications are what underpin the whole telecoms industry. Even the new kids on the block have to engage with the process. Etsy CTO Adrian Scrace explains how the venerable organization is working with the Oran Alliance on its latest specifications. We have a, a, a process whereby we can take works from external bodies, we can process them uh, through a publicly available specification process. They are then published as uh, Etsy deliverables. So we received the first such deliverable from the ORAN Alliance. We scrutineered that. We made a number of comments for improvement. They have been in in incorporated. And we've now published the first of the ORAN specifications as an Etsy publicly available specification. What we expect to happen next is that there will be a series of um, specifications to follow and they will, they will then be put through exactly that same, same process. But it's entirely up to the ORAN Alliance to determine the rate at which they wish to process their works through the Etsy uh, pass process. Well, according to Jilin Yi, the co-chair of the ORAN Technical Steering Committee and who is also the chief scientist at China Mobile, there are a further 20 or so specifications on this track for 2023. So watch out, Adrian, work is incoming. Speaking with my colleague Ray Lemaitre, Jilin also spoke of the desire to strengthen engagement with 3GPP, the preeminent standards body for 5G. We are looking at, uh, actually, for 2023, to kind of uh, uh, bring it to a next level uh, in terms of our engagement with 3GPP. Because uh, you know that 3GPP is still the center and the most important SDO for our industry in general. And uh, we would like to be able to um, have really a very well aligned uh, effort going forward, especially for some of the value from our already accomplished technical work. Uh, we would like to see if uh, 3GPP would be interested in adopting some of that uh, with the help of uh, all of the, the players in our ecosystem. So I think 2023 will be a very exciting year, very challenging, but very exciting year. We have a lot to do. We can't wait to see how the open run landscape shapes up. And for a real in-depth look at the technical work of the Oran Alliance, then do watch the whole interview. It's very enlightening. Now, there is always so much to learn at MWC. Do subscribe to our 7 a.m. mailer. It's packed full of news and analysis every morning, and it goes superbly well with a freshly brewed espresso. All of which means it's now time for our lightning roundup of other news from MWC. Red Hat is collaborating with Samsung to offer a virtualized RAN solution with enhanced integration and automation capabilities. It will be available as a customer proof of concept in the latter half of 2023. Samsung is proving a popular dance partner, with VMware also announcing an expanded collaboration deal. 
it will integrate Samsung's VRAN solutions with its own Telco Cloud platform as part of the DISH Wireless 5G build-out. Nokia has launched the Beacon 10, its first gateway featuring Wi-Fi 6E for high-capacity mesh networking. It supports 10 gigabit per second fiber modems, third-party applications, and includes a USP agent for easier CSP management. Wind River has announced single-core support on fourth-generation Intel Xeon scalable processors with VRAN Boost, which includes integrated acceleration to increase throughput and decrease latency. And finally, Hewlett Packard Enterprise and Nokia have expanded their partnership. They plan to integrate Nokia's CloudRAN SmartNIC Layer 1 acceleration card with HPE's trusted telco infrastructure portfolio. As well as reporting on the latest news from MWC Barcelona, we have been running a series of special Spotlight on 5G programs, just for you. Plus, there's still time to watch our MWC preview show, where Ray and I chat with HPE, VMware, AMD and Appledore about the key themes we expect to see covered during this year's show. Don't miss our Top 10 Mobile Moments series, where Ray and I look back at Telecom TV's 21 years of coverage of the industry's largest event. All the thrills and spills are there. We serve up a fresh edition of The Slice every day of MWC, with all the important news and analysis from the Telecom TV team. And then the following week, it's time for The After Show, our live Q&A program. We'll be analysing the major developments from MWC with our studio guests. So start sending in your questions now. Yes, this may be our final edition of The Slice, but our MWC coverage continues with The After Show. Mark your calendars now. We will be live on Tuesday the 7th of March at 4pm UK time. Don't forget, all of our content from MWC this year is available to watch on demand right here on Telecom TV as part of our Spotlight on 5G series. But that's all for today's edition of The Slice and this year's news coverage of MWC Barcelona. Don't forget to join Ray and me on Tuesday the 7th of March at 4pm UK time for the live after show. And please send in your questions and comments. We want to hear from you. Until then, thanks for watching and goodbye.